Okay, so let's look at a few of the features of uh, the Rig Pi station server. All right, it's called the RSS. This is a new uh, product that uh, MFJ is coming out with uh, real soon. Uh, I'm helping to beta test and uh, identify issues and and uh, make recommendations on buttons and uh, how things should work and, uh, and, and test them. So I just want to give you a little uh, rundown in more detail. We've talked a little about it in the past, but uh, have not um, uh, talked a lot in detail. So I'm going to log in here. I'm going to log into it. There we go. And you can see this is what the uh, basic screen looks like when you uh, when you pull up the uh, the RSS or the RigPi station server. And you'll notice up here we've got frequency and uh, if we go split we've got two frequencies of course we have an S meter <clears throat> here's our main tuning dial here we can tune by just digits or we can tune by uh, entering uh, digits let's see what else so uh, let's uh, see how to jump into this first of all uh, across the top up here you'll see You've got the tuner, that's the main screen. This is the main tuner screen. This is where you'd operate uh, remotely. And uh, right now I'm going through the internet, so it's uh, like I'm at a hotel or, or I could be in the car uh, using Wi-Fi in the car and using this screen to go back, connect back to the radio here. So this is the tuner screen. There's a keyer, there's a keyer function, we'll talk more about it. There's a logging function that will log You've got uh, spots, like DX spots. You can do web browsing. And here's where you do some of your settings. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's see if we can find a couple signals on here. Well, first, let me just show you. Uh, the setup is pretty simple. You just go to settings, radio. <clears throat> and here you would select, you would select your type radio. Uh, in this case, I'm using a Kenwood. I'm using the Kenwood uh, TS2000. Let me see if I can find it here. I'm using the Kenwood TS2000. I'm just going to set my baud rate at 4800. And, and so that's uh, pretty simple on the setup screen, and you have a disconnect and a connect to radio. I'm going to go back now to the tuner. <clears throat> All right, I'm back to the tuner. And several things uh, are going on here. First of all, if you want to do split screen, you can, you know, you, I mean, split uh, operation. You can hit the split button. And that actually turns the other VFO on here. Uh, so you could operate split if you want to. Uh, I'm going to turn split off. Uh, this tells you right now we're in lower sideband. We're in receive. We've got a UTC clock up here. I think you can make it local if you want to. <clears throat> and you can read the uh, main and subband frequencies. Uh, over here on the left, you've got all the different uh, uh, buttons for the different bands you might want to work. Uh, the, on this particular radio, we've got set up 160 through 2 meters. And you can select uh, lower sideband, upper sideband, CW, AM, and so forth, FM, and so forth. Now, the neat thing about it, there's macros. You can set macros up here. If you're in a CW contest or something, you can actually set a macro up here. That will actually uh, uh, send uh, Morse code. I don't know if you heard that or not. Uh, so you can uh, actually set uh, keys up for CW. Now, you, you can also set key, uh, keys up to uh, control your radio. For instance, uh, this tune button will actually tune the radio. If I jump to different bands and want to kind of fine tune the, uh, the match the radio there, I can hit the tune button, and you guys aren't hearing it, but I'm hearing relays clicking the radio over there, so it, it actually tuned. Let me show you how simple it is to set the macros up right here. <clears throat> you just go to macros. Go to macros. You pick one of these uh, blank ones if you want to create a new one or whatever. But I want to I want to uh, go to the one that says tune. All I got to do is find it. Uh, so to create a button, all you do is just type in what what name you want on the button, we'll put tune. And then you look in your radio manual and then you come over here, uh, this is, I'm a button six. You come over here to the, to the macro button six 
And you look in your radio manual that came with your radio, and in the appendix, uh, it's got all the commands for different things. And we know uh, uh, by looking at the book to initiate the tuner, it's AC111. And the book is very clear in laying it out. What that means, the AC is the tuner. One means uh, I'm going to tune, uh, I think, the receiver. Uh, uh, now the second one is going to tune the uh, um, the transmitter, and then the third one is uh, I'm going to tune the radio. So you just put the code AC111 and a semicolon in there. Okay, so that's that's the button we just identified as tune, and we go back to uh, Rick Pie, and and there's a tune button. If I press that, it's going to send a command. It sends a command to radio and tunes it. Uh, again, here's a preamp on and off. Uh, I just set that one up. Uh, that, that's easy to set up. That's preamp on. Preamp off. Preamp on, pre preamp off. And again, you can look at, uh, you can look at the, the, those buttons that I set up under macro uh, for the uh, preamp, here's your preamp. I just called one button, preamp on, and the code there is PA1. That's preamp, and one means on. And I created another button here, and I just named it preamp off, and that's it, and that's PA0. Uh, that's the preamp off. So it's real simple to uh, uh, to customize any button you want for your radio. Uh, I've done things like processor on and off, preamp on and off, tune, and so forth. And I've showed, showed you my uh, little box that I built uh, that actually disconnects the antenna and turns the 12 volt power supply off. Uh, we have now uh, uh, designed the uh, rig pie where it will send a, a, a connection out and it will actually turn the 12 volt power off and it will actually uh, disconnect the antenna and ground it. And I just created a button called, uh, I, call, I call it, uh, antenna power on and antenna power off. So if I click that button right there, the radio is going to turn off. Well, actually, I don't have the box plugged in right now, but uh, the it, radio would actually turn off and the power supply, and then um, that way you're safe if you're away from home and the antenna's on, you're having a lightning storm or whatever, your antenna's disconnected from radio. So let's go back and see if we can tune somebody in here. <clears throat> There's a couple ways to tune people in. Um, you can tune with the knob here. You can see it's changing the frequency. R. R. You can uh, actually uh, key on a digit and you can roll the mouse. I'm rolling the mouse up, rolling the mouse down right now. So that's another way we can tune. Or you can just tune by uh, keyboard input. I'm, a, I'm just going to put the uh, I'm going to put the cursor right here, and I'm going to key in, uh, I want to go on 7200, so I'm going to key in 2, and it automatically jumps to the next position, so I say 0, 0, so it puts me on 7200. All right, so, so that's how, uh, how that works. So there's a couple ways. You can tune with the knob, you can tune by uh, clicking the digits, you can tune by inputting the digits. Let me see if I can find somebody here. Uh, let's let's find some signals. I looked at the scope. There's not much on 40 meters right now. Okay. Coming back up. There we go. Okay, Rod. Yeah, the band's running kind of different tonight. I had a good copy on you. 20 over. So. Okay, a whole day in West Virginia, and he sends his regards. So that's how uh, how we can tune people in. Thank you, Rod. Let's see if I can find another signal or two. Bring up some. Yeah. 
five nine plus ten, uh, Khalid, uh, in the state of New Hampshire. The name here is Woody Whiskey Oscar Oscar Del Kanky. Go ahead. All right, if we want to change bands, if we want to change bands, all we have to do is click on the band here, for instance, 20 meters. It does remember the last uh, frequency we had in, we were on 14.312, and uh, uh, of course, it's going to set it for upper side band. I don't think we're going to hear anybody on 2020. It's pretty dead right now. I looked at the data scope on my 7,620. It's just, there's nothing on 20 right now. There's somebody. I have no problem talking to you. You were peaking F5 there. I was watching the meter here too. So you're doing great. What did you do there for your antenna? Did you find some aluminum sections? And is it ground mounted or do you have it elevated over? All right, so we, we, went, we found a signal on 20. Let's, let's camp up to uh, 80 meters real quick, see if anything's on 80. I doubt it. We'll see. I'll just real fast tune. I heard a few little weak signals in here, man. Uh, Okay, let's jump back to 40. That's where we had more activity while ago. The name is George, QSS. All right, George, good to hear you. You got R here. Okay, this is This is November 3rd for the Yankee Victor. All right, so you can see how it, uh, how it tunes. Let's see what else can I show you about this. Um, Hey, you know, the neat thing about this, too, is uh, spots. Let me show you spots. Let's go to the settings for spots, and we're going to just set spots. These are like uh, spotting uh, servers or DX spot servers. Look at all these listed here. All the way, all around the world, these are servers that are out there with, uh, with DX spots on it. Uh, I'm just going to pick a U.S. server. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's uh, click on KK4 UIL. This is a uh, Huntsville, no, Hamilton, Alabama DX spot. Now I'm going to click there. Now I'm going to go back to the tuner and uh, we're going to look at spots. So if I go over here and click on spots, that's telling me everything that's on that server right now. Look at this. It's giving me the frequencies and uh, there's uh, uh, AC4GW. I just heard CO2RQ in Cuba listed there and he's on uh, uh, and it gives you a graphical readout here on the side now watch this if I click on this this is uh, we're not going to hear anything because that was on uh, um, that was on 160 but watch this that, uh, that contact right now is being made on 160 at 1840 now, I'm gonna click on it watch what happens when I click on that when I click on that and go back to the tuner I'm on 1840. I'm on that exact frequency where those guys are talking. Um, so if you find somebody here you want to uh, uh, talk to, a DX station or something, and it also puts it over here, 1840, on, on the graph here. Let's look at uh, this guy right here in Ecuador. I'm going to click on this guy. He's on 7074. That's probably, I guess that's digital. So he's on 7074. I'm going to click on HC5F. And uh, it, it tells me all the stations that basically, I guess, are running uh, digital there. Uh, I'm on, it's on 7074. If I go back to the tuner, it's going to put me on 7074 right there, 7074. Uh, okay, so you can see how you can use the spots to, uh, uh, you know, if you're looking for a rare station or a state or something, you can click on that spot, and uh, it'll put you right on this frequency there, and then you can listen and see if you can hear it. Uh, it's got a log in here. Uh, it will log your uh, contacts. Um, uh, I haven't played any with the log yet. Here's another neat feature. Uh, again, guys, I'm on the internet, but look, it's got a look up here. It's got a look up here. We're going to look up uh, HC5F. I actually put him in the, uh, since it's the last station I clicked on, I actually put him in a search up here. I'm going to click the search for HC5F right here. And it tells me he's in Ecuador, latitude, longitude, beam headings, and so forth, and rotate the antenna, and so forth. Now, uh, this is a good lookup 
fast lookup for you to uh, use when you're making contacts. I'm going to put W5 KUB in here. And I'm going to just hit look up here. And look at there. There it is. Tom Medlin. There's my address in Carryville and, and so forth. Yeah, this, uh, this uh, rig pie is going to have rotor control. In other words, it, as you saw there, it sees the uh, latitude and longitude, and it'll actually aim the rotor at the station if you uh, have that turned on, uh, if you have a, a rotor that you can connect it to. So that's, uh, that's a cool thing about it. Let's see what else is in here. Um, so uh, you can set up different user accounts. Right now, I've got Walter, uh, a user account set up in R3E, and I've got Mean account set up. You can set up multiple accounts where you have your friends can uh, 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 connect into it, make contacts through it if you want to. Let's see what else we got. I'm not too familiar with the keyer yet. I haven't been working with the keyer yet. I'm going to go back to Tuner. Uh, again, I'm using the TS2000 radio right here. Now, the way that connects to, uh, to the rig pie, we're coming out of the rig pie box with the, just a little uh, a serial to uh, USB adapter. And that plugs right into the back of the radio. So the TS2000 has a DB9 on the back of it for your serial connections. So that's how we're controlling the radio. All the cat commands are being controlled through that cable, serial cable to the radio. We are uh, taking an audio line and a, a an audio line for uh, audio in and audio out out of the rig pie and putting that into uh, the radio uh, to um, move the audio in and out of that radio. Now, uh, I've tested this on the uh, I've tested it on the ICOM and the Yezu, they have uh, USB connectors on the back. And I've uh, found out that y you can actually configure it and you can run the audio and the cat control through a single USB connector uh, plugged between the radio and the rig pie. So, um, oh, and here's the push to talk right here. You press it and it keys your transmitter. We're actually we're actually on the air right now. Oop. Right. Well, I don't want to be on 7074 for sure. That was a mistake of mine. So let's, 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 let's just go out of the band here. Let's go up the band a little. Let's go up to 72. Okay. Go push to talk. Uh, and then, uh, of course, that's uh, transmit. We're transmitting up in the... In, and I said CW, I need to go to lower side band. There we go. Now we're on lower side band. So, you know, working out all the little issues to, to automate a lot of this stuff to make it work properly. Uh, we've made a lot of improvements in it uh, over the past uh, 30 days. Um, hopefully this thing will be on the market real soon. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty neat, uh, pretty neat little box. The little box is about four inches square. It will actually it actually uh, will replace your station computer. You don't even need a computer or a laptop at your station anymore. Uh, you can use it, and uh, it's got its own browser in it where you can you know, browse the Internet and do all the kind of things you want to. So that's kind of a, a quick overview of the new RigPi station server, the RSS. It's going to carry a number of MFJ1234, meaning it's as easy as 1234 to operate. So. Man, I'm really excited about this. I'm already making contacts with it, and uh, this is going to be our mobile from now on. Uh, hey, the tablet, the tablet in the truck with this screen right here, we can jump any bands we want. And like I say, we're using right now. It's plugged into a TS2000, running about 100 watts uh, back here in the Memphis area, and I've got an off-center fed 80 through 6 meter off-center fed antenna on there, which makes it real easy to jump from 80, 40, 20, you know, different bands. Uh, um, so it gives you that capability to jump around different bands by having a multi, basically a multi-band antenna on there. So, hey, I hope uh, I, I showed you some detail that uh, uh, you haven't seen in previous shows, and uh, um, there'll be more to come. Thanks.